Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. Hey, and today we have one of my favorite sort of episodes where I'm interviewing a fellow author. So uh, I was lucky enough to be on Laura Noel's uh, podcast a few months ago, and now it's my turn. I get to have her on here, and she is the author of Rat Race Reboot, Unlock Your Full Potential to Achieve Impossible Goals, which is one of the things that I'm all about. So without further ado, let's roll the episode with Laura. Hey, Laura, it is great to have you here. I love the I love the title of your new book and um, love that we're able to connect. I know I was on your podcast a few months ago. We had a great discussion. So uh, if people listening haven't heard it yet, go check that one out, too. Uh, yeah. And we'll try to put a, a link to that in the show notes, too. But welcome, 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 welcome to the show. You, we be jamming this morning, yeah? <laughs> we have. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you for hosting me too. And this has been a long time coming. And uh, we did have a great conversation on my show a few months back. So definitely uh, check out the link. Uh, it, it was fun. So I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, well, and I think it's, you know, m most people, they want to write a book, right? It's like, it's like, uh, I don't know, almost everybody, it seems like wants to write a book. Probably not everybody, but but one of the things that's interesting too is that like from from professions that people really re like their dream profession. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I'd read is that for women, it's to be an author, which is yeah. which is kind of interesting. But but I know so many people that do want to be an author, but it takes a tremendous amount of work to write a book, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. so having written a few myself, I always love speaking with other creatives and authors and kind of the process you've gone through and the message that you're trying to present because i think you know putting putting that information in book form so people can consume it and can have the information is probably one of the greatest services that we can provide to this world so first off applaud you thank you right for being one of those people <laughs> trying to help change the world um but but let's let's kind of jump in. I mean, I, I love the title Rat Race Reboot. So where did you get the title from and why that that line resonates with me a lot, but why does it resonate with you or why you're called yeah. the book that? Yeah, you know, maybe about a year and a half ago. Um, first of all, the the book writing journey, I was thinking about this earlier today. I that had a lot of like stop, start, stop, start, stop, start since I want to say 2018 when I was first inspired mm -hmm. to write a book. And I remember listening to somebody talk about, you know, what it could mean for you to write a book and getting your voice out there in the world and sharing your message. And when I was seeing other people's books up there on the screen, I became overwhelmed with emotion. I'm in this big seminar room going, Laura Noel, what's wrong with you? Why are you about to cry? And then I I just went and I wrote down all of these chapters with sub chapters, like right then and there. And I signed up for um, coaching. I'd never done anything like this before. And I had a lot of false starts and stops. Um, and in 2021, I, so I didn't actually leverage the coaching, but it did plant the seed and get me started. And I was still a part of her community. I reached out to her in 2021 and I'm like, I'm really doing it this time, but it's not the book that I originally intended. Mm. It was something completely different. And at that time I was working with another coach. We had done a one day intensive kind of strategically planning the year and just getting really focused and tuning out the noise. And that's where my podcast was born and, and the idea of a book. Um, and I decided then that I wasn't going to let this opportunity, all of this work that, and spiritual work that we put into this one day together and really collaborating and brainstorming, um, my coach basically opened her R Rolodex <laughs> to me and um, I, I just took action. And so Rat Race Reboot came out of those discussions. First, it was the podcast. And the idea is to help people reset their mind, reawaken their spirit, 
so they can regain control over the things that they say are important to them, as opposed to, um, and I've been in the rat race, as opposed to external circumstances leading the way. You know, mm-hmm. other people, other people shooting on us, as I always say. <laughs> <laughs> and we should on ourselves a lot too, right? Yeah. Other people do, but we do too, right? And you, yeah. you shouldn't should where you eat, right? <laughs> I've heard that one too. That, yeah, that's so true. And we do it to ourselves, right? Like we yeah. guilt ourselves. We, and, and that just blocks the flow of energy. Um, and so that's what Rat Race Reboot is all about, is helping people to rediscover who they are truly and and what they do is not who they are it can be a part of who they are yeah well and that's that's an important thing because i think um it's who they are not what they do right that that you're, that you're kind of talking about because to me especially having come from the corporate world that rat race of the corporate world I totally get right. And everybody who's listening that's in a corporate job, that way you can understand that. I mean, you feel like the little rat or the hamster on the on the on the wheel, right? You're just kind of going around, 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 around. You know, you get you get up in the morning, you're tired, you know, you caffeinate yourself, you drag yourself into work, you know, you you're you're busy all day, you feel exhausted, you come home exhausted. Uh, you know, you flop yourself in bed and the next day you get up and you do the same thing over and over again. Right. And before people know it, 10 years, 15 years has passed. And all of a sudden people wake up and they're like, what the fuck? (laughs) Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, where did, where did that last 10 or 15 years go? But I think it's interesting because a couple of things you just said, I want to dig into a little bit deeper where you said that it's about rediscovering who they are right? Not what they do. And I, and I know for myself, I'm still working through this, right? But so much of the time we place or believe our identity is what we do. I'm a doctor. I'm a CPA. I'm an author. I'm a whatever, right? So, you know, how does, how does that, because I'm sure, again, a lot of people that are listening can be like, hold it. That's the way that I think about it, right? I mean, if you go to a party and you're meeting somebody and they say, hey, Laura, what do you do? Yeah. What do you normally say? Because those things that come out of our mouth is typically how we I- identify ourselves, yeah. right? And so how how is that so damaging for people? And why do you want to get people out of that? Yeah, it's it's limiting. And I I experienced that same rat race. I mean, I was in the military at, for almost 28 years. And that's similar to somebody that's been in corporate America, right? For that long of a time, you get conditioned to act and be in a certain way and and follow these norms uh, and these guidelines that have been placed on us externally, right? And we start to believe that this is the way things are and we conform to it um and so it's i want to make sure i address your question what specifically did you want to get to in that well just just as far as uh, you know because i think a lot of people and it reminds me of the movie the matrix uh, yeah right yeah. red pill or blue pill right. well most of the people in the world are taking the the blue pill because they're in the rat race they don't even realize right that 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 they're they're in those little machines and they're not actually living because they've been conditioned to believe a certain thing do a certain thing this is the only way that it can be and i think because it becomes so normal for people they don't realize there's something even different yeah they well they don't realize and like i mentioned it's it's limiting them it's yep. limiting their potential because they have so much potential and energy locked up inside of them all of us do and we're not we're not even expanding to our fullest potential i always say we, we do when we're ready to assume the lotus position and and float up right we're ascend that's when we've reached you know this potential in this body but there's so much more that we can accomplish and, and we can get so stuck in 
not only the things that we've been doing, but we can get caught up in, in how we can grow and expand. We get caught up in the mechanism behind it because it's what we've always done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the beauty, when we get back to our creativity and we start to broaden our focus, you know, there's so much in, in the way of neuroscience that talks about, you know, there's, there's benefit in focus, like laser pointed focus to accomplish things. But when we want to tap into our creativity and intuition, for example, that inner voice of wisdom, we want to broaden our focus. And we do that by creating space for ourselves. And when we can start to expand and listen to that inner wisdom, and then actually follow that wisdom or curiosity, that can lead to better and greater things. And the beautiful thing is, is it doesn't have to be more work or more effort. It can be, actually be less work. There could be a more effective way of you advancing your vision. And if it's your corporate job, great, whatever that is, but also your, your purpose, your vision for your life, your joy, your mm -hmm. expansiveness. Yeah. Cause it seems like, you know, again, I mean, like you said, the rat race kind of conditions us into thinking small, into narrowing yeah. our focus. You know, and, and honestly, it's done so people can control you, right? I mean, because, I mean, come on, who wants a worker that's going to question everything you ask him to do or not believe something or not pay their taxes or whatever else, whatever other way your, you know, systems or people are trying to control other people. But I think what's interesting is, like you said, in, in, in doing that and in having that condition, we quit listening to our inner wisdom. Right. We, we don't even consider that. And one of the one of the phrases that you use was reawaken spirit. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Because that's a big thing for me. And I think a, a, a bigger uh, theme for why to get out of the rat race and why to get rid of some of this conditioning but I think a lot of people don't even think about that as as what they're trying to do or what they should be should be doing. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us, myself included, I was in this in the rat race too. I was looking outside of myself for answers, for solutions, instead of tapping into myself. And I thinking about somebody recently who I worked with who, you know, were taught to, oh my gosh, I I'm experiencing burnout. I'm doing too many things. I'm not being effective. I need a time management tool or a productivity course or a, you know, some kind of program management thing. And I had somebody come to me that was a high achiever, um, wonderful in their career, wanted these things. And I'm like, well, I don't really teach that per se. I mean, I do have some tips, but you know, why do you want those things? What changes in your life happen as a result of you managing your time better? What does that look like? What do you really desire? And once he started kind of flipping it a little bit and, and actually asking him those questions himself, those questions, what do I want? What's different in my life? Um, I mean, rarely do people say, because I want to work more. I mean, we, <laughs> You know, <laughs> I want to get more, more meaningless shit done right, quicker. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's usually because people want to um, find what they're passionate about again. They want to, you know, reconnect with relationships that are important to them, reconnect with themselves. Sometimes people, I know I was in this mindset. I don't even know who I am anymore. Do I even want this? How do I want to give? What's my legacy? And all of those things are inside of us. So long story short, when he started living, tapping into his intuition, what he really desired and taking those things seriously. And I had him put those on his calendar, you know, work will fill the time and space allotted. Mm -hmm. Those started becoming a priority and he found solutions that he wasn't really engaging with before, like um, empowering other people to take pieces of a project and not micromanaging so much. A lot of those things started to unfold naturally for him to where when he would go home, his family's like, <laughs> his daughter's like, what, why are you around so much? <laughs> 
can't, can't you leave me alone, <laughs> right? But those were the things that were important to him was like going to the game, going to the play, being effective in work. So you, when you tap into spirit, you can, you don't necessarily have to sacrifice your effectiveness in the work that you love. You can, you can tap into spirit. And a lot of times the, the guidance you get is counterintuitive, but it's more effective. Mm-hmm. More rewarding. Well, and we got we got we got to come back to that one too because yeah. I think that's that's one that a lot of people don't realize, or when they start to see that, they really question it. Yeah. But as you as you were talking, it kind of reminds me. You know, there's this story, right? And it's not it's not a real story, probably, but but where where you know at the beginning the gods were were sitting around and they're like, okay, you know the the secret of the universe. You know, where are we going to hide it? Because it's it's got to be something that people have to strive and work for, right? Because that's that's part of how we grow is, you know, by going through some of these challenges or by working and having to do what we have to do in order to grow and develop and evolve ourselves. And so so they're sitting around and they're like, okay, so so where are we going to hide this thing, right? To make it difficult for people to find it. And so one one of the gods raises their hands and says, "Well, how about if we if we hide it at the top of a mountain?" And so they sat there and they debated that for a little while and they said, "Well, that's a pretty good idea, but you know what, eventually somebody's probably going to climb all the mountains and and they're going to find it. That we we can't put it there." And so one of the other gods raised their hand and said, "Well, <clears throat> how about if we put it in the bottom of the ocean?" That would be a harder place for them to go to than hiking a mountain. If we hide it there, maybe they won't they won't find it. And so so they debated that for a little while and they said, yeah, but you know what? That's it's kind of like the mountain. It's it's still going to be some place where people are going to think to go and they're going to they're going to do what it takes to actually get there. And, and, and finally, as they were talking, one of the other ones said, what if we hide it within the person and they're like they'll never think to look there (laughs) right and so like you said i mean i think a lot of times it's that inner wisdom it's reconnecting with who we are it's going within the answers are within right we can listen to everybody else out there but as long as we continue to try to find our answers from external sources, we're effectively kind of giving our power away to those other people and just doing what they suggest we should do, which is often not the right thing for us when we're honest with ourselves, right? And it, it sounds like you kind of went through some of the, some of that kind of a, of an exercise with that guy. I mean, so what what are what are some of the things that you would do or if people are like hey i I think i want to start kind of doing that well obviously go buy your book because that's going to give you more information (laughs) exactly but what are what are some things that we can kind of give give people today to start kind of thinking about um to 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 kind of realign or look inside and try to find that inner wisdom again because it's not as simple as i wish it were as simple as laura take this red pill and everything will be fine but yeah, it ain't exactly. that, it's, it's not that easy. No. And, and, you know, I, I want to draw the distinction between working hard and doing the work and the work is mm-hmm. in going, going within. Right. Um, and so first you've got to set your sights on something you want. Right. And that's why when I was talking with this gentleman, I'm like, why do you want time management? Why do you think you need it? What would change? And so I was you know, not everybody's like ready to go into like a dream state. So I was just like, practically, you know, what would be different for you? And so starting there, what, what would be different? What would you want to create? What would your ideal, your worthy ideal look like, right? So you got to have that star that you're shooting for. So that's first and foremost. Then if you can imagine who you would be, when you've reached that vision, if you want more ease and flow, if you want more, if you want to be even more successful, wildly successful and have fulfilling relationships and 
um, downtime to play and and explore art and creativity, that other side of you that maybe you used to dive into as a kid. What would who would you be? How would you be showing up? How would that feel? So journaling about some of that. Maybe take a couple weeks every morning, just 10 minutes, like start there. And maybe the first few days you have pen and paper and nothing comes out, but just be persistent. You are the boss of you. You tell your brain what you want it to do and start to journal. And then another thing that I ask people to do is, okay, now that you're there, I want you to start a list of 50 things that you would do if you were that person right now. Because I want them, you, you already are that person. If you can imagine it, you already are. It just hasn't physically manifested in your life yet. So I have people write down 50 things that they would be, do, or have in that, that worthy ideal. And then I have them take another look at it and circle the things that they could do right now to some extent. So if, you know, if somebody wants to have somebody clean their house every week and maybe that's not feasible for them right now well what if they did it once for the season okay you can do that to some extent um if you want a material thing and it's like i don't know like a lamborghini um maybe that's not feasible but maybe you could test drive one so i guarantee of that list of 50 probably at least 40 of them you can do to some extent now, if you have the dream home or your, your oasis where you can think and be, what are some pieces that you would have in that space to remind you of it? Can you go find a plant that you would have there and put it in your office now? So you want to get in the habit of living from the end. Mm -hmm. And when your intuition starts to guide you, or you have an inclination to um, call somebody, or you have an idea to do something, I had somebody that was like, I have, I have this, this desire to like, practice my hoops again, but that's, <laughs> that's frivolous. And I'm like, that is not frivolous, because play is an essential part of your brain and creativity. That's, that's an, a part of your growth. So it's not even woo woo. It's, it's science, right? It's, you know, so listen to those little nudges and take action on them. That's what I call taking inspired action. Well, and I think that's good because like you said, I think often we will, because what's interesting, like the counterintuitive side of it is, and this will happen to everybody who's listening because it happens to me and I'm guessing it happens to you. Yeah. The more we start to listen internally, there will be things that come up that just don't make logical sense. And we're like, come on, really? I should go out back and shoot hoops for a half an hour each day or 15 minutes or whatever, like I used to do when I was a teenager. I mean, come on, I'm a responsible adult. I I can't spend 15 minutes just just practicing, you know, my free throws or my three point jump or whatever. Right. Cause, yeah. cause I mean, I'm not a professional basketball player. How is that going to help me in my career? Yeah. How am I going to make more money doing that? So, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And so we'll poo poo it, mm -hmm. but it's actually when you do those things and when you start taking some of that inspired action, because like you said, it's it's not just woo-woo. It's woo-woo, but it's science. Mm -hmm. Is that if shooting hoops makes you happy and you can spend 15 minutes out of the day feeling happy and being happy, yeah, boom, right? Mm -hmm. That not only from a psychological perspective raises you know you to a different emotional state but it literally raises your frequency emotionally, spiritually, every other way as well, mm -hmm. to where you're actually in a, in a much better spiritual state yeah. uh, as well, right? And, and, and what's interesting, you know, too, because I heard you say work, working hard is not the same as doing the work. Right. And I think that's another thing that is often counterintuitive for people 
as they start going down this path. A lot of the things of doing the work are simple, easy things. But because they're simple and easy, we think they're not, that's not what we should be doing, right? We need to be working hard. I need to be climbing Mount Everest. And if I don't get to the top of Mount Everest, then whatever, right? But, you know, never, never confuse the fact of simplicity with what's really important. And, and I was trying to, I was actually just listening to a recording this morning uh, where one of my mentors said, I'm going to probably chop it up a little bit, but uh, where he pretty much said, it takes nothing, but it brings everything. Mm. It takes nothing to do that but it brings everything right and so i think sometimes the simplicity of feeling grateful for 15 seconds the simplicity of shooting hoops for 15 minutes in the backyard just seems so simple that we don't think it's working or that it's helping but those simple things make all the difference. Absolutely. You know, it's feeling is the conscious awareness of the vibration or energy we're in. Mm-hmm. And when we do these little things, we're we're planting seeds, we're getting in alignment with the the end result that we want. But often we think it's not working. And so we're digging up those seeds and killing what we planted. And I, you know, case in point, when I first started on this journey and I was working with um, Bob Proctor, I was in the military at the time and I was wanting to start my coaching business. And I wanted to, in order to feel good about leaving the military, I at least wanted to earn what I was earning as a good transition. And, but what we're told when we're working in in a service, we have to speak to so many people, like it's numbers, right? And this is what sales training will tell you, right? And so we have to talk to a certain number of people, a certain number of people will say no. And it, anyway, I was already working like 12 hours a day with my commute back and forth. And I was building my business on the weekends. And so the number of people that I thought I needed to talk with was just, it just seemed insurmountable. Mm -hmm. And Bob asked me how many hours you work in. I told him, and he's like, Hmm, that's not a lot of time. And he, like, he was very demanding. (laughs) He's Um, he's old school, kick your ass kind of guy. yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he's like, you know, I just want you to talk to two people a week. That's it. And if you're not moving at least one of them, work on your presentation. My business took off when I started doing that. It didn't make sense. It was counterintuitive. But immediately, I felt like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. And I thought, my God, I can enjoy my weekends again. And Haw- I was living in Hawaii. I can go to the beach, <laughs> you know, cause I worked hard. It, you know, it wasn't that I wasn't a hard worker. I did, but I was, I, I was using grit to move me ahead in my life and in my career. And this was a completely different way of thinking. It was ease and flow. So I was more when I was relaxing on the beach, when I was riding my little cruiser bike to the market, getting my green smoothies and just, you know, walking my dogs, playing fetch, hanging out with my husband. Um, that's when I would have an idea, call Sally or um, connect with Joe. And those were the, I was getting downloads of who I felt could benefit from my coaching and who I, I would wanna talk with. And that's when my business started to explode. So I wasn't talking to massive amounts of people, far less, but I had so much joy Mm -hmm. in the conversations I was having. And then those individuals wanted my help. And that's how I grew. 
Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's totally counterintuitive because everybody else would say you need to talk to 20 people a week, blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. Right. Yep. But what's interesting. And again, that, that is a great example of what we're talking about, what you're talking about here, right. Is that when, when you place all of that stress on yourself of having to talk to so many people because that's what the sales expert tells you that you have to do and you have to put in a certain number of hours every week in order to make your business actually grow right those are all things that we're taught those are conditions from the outside and for most people that creates a lot of stress in their life and so again let's say you know you're you're spending an extra 10 hours a week stressing about meeting those numbers yeah versus bob coming to you and say nope just talk to two people just two people mm -hmm. right and so you go from maybe 10 hours of feeling stressed in the week to maybe an hour of feeling that joy that lightness that that peace maybe it's a complete 10 10 to 10 swap i don't know yeah but even one hour of feeling happy and feeling joy is going to allow you to receive much more than 10 hours of stress will Absolutely. and so it, like you said it, it seems counterintuitive but that's really the way that it actually works yeah and you can see how I would have limited myself if I were trying to cram in visiting 20 people on a Saturday or the weekend, right? <sighs> I wouldn't have been effective. I would have thought I need to talk to more people. I'm not doing this right, right? Um, I would have been limiting myself and my reach and the number of people I was able to help. Well, and what are some, so that's a great example of kind of one of the counterintuitive things. What are some other counterintuitive things that people typically come across as they're starting to do this? Because they, I think what happens is, is people listen to something like this and they're like, oh, Laura, that's a great idea. They go and buy your book and they read it and they're like, oh, I love it. This is a great idea. Yeah. And then they start implementing it. And a few of these counterintuitive things come along and they're like, no, it can't be that way. And so they just kind of stop at that point because they're they're having some of this counterintuitiveness come in. So so maybe what are some of the kind of common things that people might feel or or sense at, at this point so that people that are listening as they start to go through this process and they start to get these things? Because I think sometimes that counterintuitiveness can feel like resistance. And so we want to stop. We just stop at that point. But but what do people typically kind of go through in some of those things? Oh my gosh, there's so there's so many. Um, well, people think they can manage time, but they can't. They can only manage activities, so that's one. So they have to make decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I would say also, and I I thought this too. I would look at my circumstances and decide that that was reality, but reality is really constructed from within. And that was like a big mind blower. Um, you know, our, when we look at current circumstances and results from a spiritual perspective, we're in alignment with what we don't want, that energy. From a brain perspective, our brain can't see opposite ends of the same thing at the same time. So it can't see a problem and a solution at the same time. So if you want to achieve a level of success in your business, but you're seeing, um, you know, you're in the red and you're thinking to yourself, well, look at the results. I'm in the red. Um, you know, how can I stop the bleed? Your brain, because you're telling your brain, your subconscious mind, what's important by continually dwelling on it, your brain is basically saying, well, here's more of that. Here's more evidence of that. It's kind of similar to when we say we want a red BMW and we didn't see them on the road before, but then now they're everywhere. Now they're everywhere. But it's how your brain works. It's you know, the filtration system of your brain. But if you can switch that 
to, okay, this is over here. This, this happened as a result of my past thinking. What would I rather instead? So it's counterintuitive to put your energy on what would I rather instead? Because we want to fix the problem. We want to focus on the problem, but we want to focus really on the solution. And when we focus on that worthy ideal, that's when we are priming our brain. This, you know, there's whole, all studies on like unconscious thought theory, um, goal priming. When we're, when we're planting those seeds in our brain, even when we are not consciously striving for that goal or that thing, when we're out in our lives, something might trigger that that goal or that idea that you, that seed you planted and that might be the solution or it might you know remind you to call somebody that and they have the answer so we can't see problems and solutions at the same time we need to shift our focus and that was hard for me to to really understand too going through this well yeah and i and i think too it's the um you know we're we're, we're taught to problem solve Right. I mean, I, I know for me, vocationally, I mean, shit, I'm a risk, you know, I've been taught in risk management. I mean, come right. on, right? That's yeah. problem solving, right? Yeah. Most most management is problem solving, right? Yeah. And so in our in our day-to-day -day rat race job, that's what we spend our whole day doing. That's what we get trained that we're supposed to do. That's what we get told that we're supposed to do. So it's not a surprise that we all want to do it. Right. But but usually the right way, like you said, is counterintuitive. It's like 180 degrees different than what we would expect. And so that's why when you go back and you, you know, you read some of the different sacred texts, right, mm -hmm. that a lot of times there are these counterintuitive things in there. Right. When Lao Tzu says, if you want to be straight, be crooked. You know, most people would look at that and they're like, huh? <laughs> How does that make any sense? Oh, if I want to be straight, I got to be rigid. No, <laughs> if you want to be able to be straight, you have to be curved, right? And allow yourself to be flexible. You know, when the winds, when the hurricane winds come, you have to be willing to and able to kneel, right? Until the winds pass. And so that's why things like palm trees are actually stronger than oak trees where most of the time we think oh the oak tree is solid it is but when 150 mile an hour wind comes the oak tree gets uprooted the palm tree bends and comes back up right yeah. and so some of these things are just so counterintuitive that we think they won't even work but the only way you're going to know whether it works or not is if you actually do it right I mean, a, a, another way, and again, I mean, you know, everybody listening can think about this, right? Most of the time, especially like in business, right? We think that we need to show everybody how good we are. We have to use our ego and we have to puff up our ego to convince other people or manipulate them into seeing how great we are okay yeah. but the real way is to be humble right just to be humble and to serve right so again you're going to pick ego you're going to pick humble and again the world will tell us well it's got to be ego because i got to convince laura that i know what the hell i'm talking about right and so i gotta yeah. i gotta show her how good i am and i gotta use all my fancy language right <laughs> yeah. to be able to convince you to let to, you know to let me do or take your money from you or whatever it happens to be right yeah and there's a lot of people out there we were talking about this before we hit record when you were talking we about your book yep and there were a lot of people that you're like, man, that's kind of ego. It's kind of icky. I don't really like that. I want to do the other way. Yeah, right? which doesn't make sense. I'm like, but Laura, you don't know what you're doing, but I'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. And it feels yeah. right yeah. for you. It feels aligned for you.
And so that's that's the thing to do, right? And again, I mean, people that are listening might be like, Jason, come on, blah, 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 that's that's just garbage, right? But but stop and think about people who you admire and people who you are willing to die for, if you will, right? To 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 kind of use that. And Laura has a military background, right? So that's always a great way of thinking about. You know, there's 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 certain commanding officers who instill fear and are egotistical Mm -hmm. and you're required to follow orders, ma'am. Right. Yep. Yep. And then there are other commanding officers who instill love. With their people. Yeah, they're not the flashiest. Mm -hmm. They don't comb their hair right. (laughs) You know, I don't know, whatever, right? I mean, it, it, it kind of reminds me of the old uh, 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 White Christmas movie with the, the general in there and we'll follow the old man wherever he wants to go, right? Because he wasn't a flashy, hard-nosed kind of commanding officer, but he was he was somebody who actually loved his people. And his people were willing to follow him into battle. And again, follow Mm -hmm. him into battle, right? There's the leaders who will go along and everyone follows them. There's others who bark orders from the the hill outside of firing range, right? But which one of those kinds of leaders would you want to follow, right? And so again, it's not the, the humble is more of the way to go than to try to use your ego and there's a lot of reasons for that a lot of spiritual undertones with that as well but but yeah a lot of times it's it's completely 180 degrees of what you've been taught yeah and if you're focused on ego and we all have an ego right but mm-hmm. if, you, if that's your focus what you're not focused on is solution finding. So I, I don't even want to say problem solving. I just want to call it solution finding. There right? you go. If we, can, if we can reframe that, that would be helpful. If, if you take one little nugget too. Um, but yeah, there, there's so much power in, you know, when you are first for you to lead others effectively and be that leader that you're describing, you have to lead yourself first and you have to one, be aware <sighs> that you don't know it all. None of us do. And it's a constant unfolding and learning. Um, you know, it's a, it's a journey of personal growth and peeling back those layers of the onion. And when you learn more about yourself, you understand other people much better. Um, and then you start to become that kind of leader that people want to follow, that you would want to follow. Um, and you can learn, you can learn how to do this. Yeah. Well, I think it's important, like you said, I mean, I, I kind of try to say all leadership is self-leadership, right? That if if you don't start with yourself and it, it kind of, you know, ties in and kind of wraps up in a nice little bow, some of the stuff we've been talking about, yeah. right? Is that I think, I think a lot of the times when, when people find themselves in the rat race and they want something different, you know, one of the first things that they go to is, oh, I want a different job or, oh, I want better relationships, which is fine. But we're always looking at those relationships of being relationships with other people. And probably the most important one is our relationship with ourself, right? Yeah. And getting back into tune with that, remembering who we are, actually you know realizing that yes we have the ego side of us but we have the higher side of us as well and listening to the higher side more than we're listening to the ego and that will start to get you out of this rat race looking within like yeah when you if you job hop or relationship hop and you feel like you're i keep running into the same toxic people or relationships because you haven't changed you're still attracting those toxic people yeah yeah you might want to look inside take some time yeah well no it's been great um 
talking to you again. I mean, any last 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 bits of wisdom? I know again, you've got the Rat Race re- Reboot podcast. Yes, you've got the book uh, as well. But uh, any 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 kind of final final thoughts that you want to make sure and leave people with today before we wrap up? Yeah, I, you know, when you learn to get out of the rat race and really go within, it's a beautiful thing. Because in everyday, seemingly mundane moments, you can have the presence of mind to find joy in them. And that's not just, that's not a corny like card (laughs) inscription, but my life is so much more rich now in the day-to-day moments uh, because I learned to get out of the rat race. And I'm constantly relearning. It's not something that you set it and forget it. Um, So join us on the journey. It's, it's worthwhile because you're going to experience so much more fulfillment and joy across all areas of your life. Yeah. Well, and I think too, it it can smart, it can, it can smart. It smarts when I hit myself, (laughs) (laughs) but um, (laughs) it, it, it starts with the little things. And so too, you know, again, I think a lot of times people think, well, that's great, but I don't have the time. But, you know, 15 seconds of feeling grateful, 30 seconds of, you know, feeling gratitude, you know, a minute of just sitting silent, even just that little bit of time. I mean, it is, it's so exponential. It is so exponential but you cannot consciously comprehend it because things are working on a way deeper energetic and cosmic and spiritual way but i promise everybody who's listening 30 seconds is huge huge for yourself and for the whole world and the whole universe and if i mean imagine if everybody in the world could just spend 30 seconds a day feeling grateful, what a different place this world would be. Yeah, absolutely. So Laura, thank you. Um, you know, people can reach out to you. I, th- I know you've got website and like I said, we'll, we'll put links um, below, but thank you. I, I always appreciate talking to somebody else like you who thinks some of the same crazy thoughts that I do. <laughs> And understands that a lot of life is really counterintuitive, um, but but how much greater your life can be, how much more potential uh, you can have, and how you can accomplish these what seem to be impossible goals. Uh, when you actually get off the rat race, you look internally, you start asking yourself some of these some of these questions. So, so thank you and. Uh, Hopefully we'll have you back later because I, yeah, I always love talking to people like you. So, oh, I, my pleasure. It, this was wonderful, and definitely we will connect again. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs>